Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we're going to discuss what special precautions you have to take when you add sour water stripper gas to a sulfur plant. Welcome to the Experts Network. My name is Gerald Bomi. I'm a principal engineer with Sulfur Experts. I've been working in the field of sulfur recovery for a little over 30 years. Today I'm going to deal with a common question we get obviously from our refinery sulfur plant clients. If you have a refinery, not only do you have to deal with acid gas, but you have a second stream you have to process a sour water stripper gas. So people are always questioning, what precautions do I have to take? What do I need to know that's different when I process a sour water stripper gas in addition to the acid gas? To begin with, an acid gas is an H2S CO2 mixture, some hydrocarbons, some water in there. Every sulfur plant in the world has to process one of those streams. A sour water stripper gas is a little bit different. In a refinery, every refinery will have one of these. Maybe you call it sour water stripper gas. Maybe you call it ammonia acid gas, sour water acid gas. There's different names, but it's the stream that comes from the sour water stripper. It, of course, has the same components. It has H2S in it, which is why you have to put it into the sulfur plant, some CO2, some water, some hydrocarbons, but it has one extra component that makes it difficult, and that is ammonia. A typical sour water stripper stream, even if you don't have a sample of it, you can treat it like this. It's about one-third H2S, one-third water, and one-third ammonia. So like I said, what's different about the ammonia? Why do we care? Why do we treat things differently when ammonia comes in the front end? The problem is that ammonia is the opposite of everything else that's in a sulfur plant. Sulfur plants are full of acids. H2S is an acid, CO2 is an acid, SO2 is an acid. The moment we put ammonia in there, that's the opposite of an acid, it's a base. If you go back to your high school chemistry, your university chemistry, what happens when you put an acid and a base together? You make salt. There's a couple of possible ways we make salts when we bring sour water stripper gas into sulfur plants. The first way is at the front end of the plant, H2S, CO2, and ammonia can get together and make an ammonia carbamate. This salt is made at temperatures below 85 degrees C, 185 degrees Fahrenheit. In order to avoid this type of salt formation, we need to keep everything coming into the plant that contains ammonia above those temperatures. And luckily, even if you do form this kind of salt because you get too cold, simply raise the temperature up and that type of salt will sublimate or disappear. The bigger concern in sulfur plants is after we go through the reaction furnace and we make SO2, and in some weird cases, maybe some SO3, that SO2, SO3 will get together with ammonia, make a completely different kind of salt an ammonia SO2, SO3 mixture, this kind of salt will occur, will condense, will turn into a solid below about 150 degrees C, 300 degrees Fahrenheit. We can't keep the entire sulfur plant above that temperature. Instead, what we need to do is burn the ammonia properly in the reaction furnace so there's so little ammonia coming out the back end that we won't have enough to create this sort of salt and plugging issue in the downstream sulfur plant. We have tested hundreds of sulfur plants all around the world. It's impossible to burn the ammonia completely. What we're typically looking for is to be able to burn the inlet ammonia down to less than 150 ppm coming out of the furnace, even better, less than 50 ppm. We found from experience, if you can do that, your risk of ammonia salt deposition will be significantly decreased. So let's walk through the steps of how we make sure we burn that ammonia that's in the sour water stripper gas property. The first thing we need to do is have a good burner. 
I'm just putting a generic picture up here. There's lots of good burners specifically designed for sulfur plants. You need good mixing in a sulfur plant, especially when you add sour water stripper gas. You need a burner on the front end of the furnace that's designed for that stream. Second thing you need to do is have lots of residence time inside the reaction furnace itself. If you only have acid gas, most people are comfortable with half a second, one second of time inside the furnace. In order to burn ammonia, you typically need more time than that, 0.8 seconds right up to two seconds. Additional furnace volume to give time for the ammonia to burn properly. The third thing we need to do is not put too much ammonia into the furnace. And this is where it becomes a little bit of a gray area. Most people want at least twice as much acid gas as sour water stripper gas coming into the sulfur plant so that the ammonia-free acid gas dilutes the total ammonia content down to some reasonable number. Other plants are comfortable with as much acid gas as sour water stripper gas, a one-to-one -one ratio between those. Once you start having less acid gas than sour water stripper gas, the ammonia content and the combined two streams gets high enough that most people get uncomfortable with that. This is one area where we'd love to hear from you. If you're one of those plants that runs more sour water stripper gas than acid gas, has done it successfully, you're in a very small minority. We'd love to hear your experiences with that. The one barrier that almost nobody breaks is running sour water stripper gas alone. That's 33% ammonia in the feed coming into the sulfur plant. It's not being diluted by anything else. Most people simply won't operate on sour water stripper gas alone. The final and most important way to make sure that you burn the ammonia correctly is to get the right temperature in the reaction furnace. There is lots of laboratory work, lots of field work to prove that you need very elevated temperatures to burn ammonia properly. With normal acid gas, temperatures of perhaps 1,050 Celsius, 1925 Fahrenheit, are acceptable to burn hydrocarbons and other contaminants. As soon as you introduce ammonia into the equation, you need temperatures much higher than that, around 1250 Celsius or 2350 Fahrenheit in order to do the combustion properly. The problem with those sort of temperatures as we show on this graph, no matter how rich your acid gas is, no matter how pure an H2S it is, the natural temperature in your furnace will not get to that 1250C, 2350 Fahrenheit naturally. So anybody that processes a sour water stripper gas needs some help to move that temperature up above that recommended value. To finish the video, we'll just talk about the five ways that you can help boost that furnace temperature. I won't go through them in detail. They may be topics for further videos, but number one way you can boost the temperature is just by adding a little bit of fuel gas, hydrogen gas into the furnace and elevate things. Second way you can do it is to preheat what comes into the furnace. The acid gas, the sour water stripper gas, the air streams can all go through steam heat exchangers. You can boost the temperature of all of those streams up. That will boost the temperature inside the furnace. Third way that you can do it is to put some oxygen in the furnace. Replace some of the air that you're using with oxygen. That eliminates some of the dilutant and coolant nitrogen coming into the plant. That will elevate the furnace temperature. Fourth way you can do it, if you have a lot of CO2 in your acid gas keeping the temperature down, is to do something to remove that CO2. Operate your amine plant better upstream, or in some cases even change the amine or use dual amine systems to reject as much CO2 as possible. The final one, and the one that most of you that run refineries are probably familiar with, is something called a front side split. To describe this properly would take longer than we have in this video, again probably a separate topic, but in a front side split we put all of the sour water stripper gas in the furnace, in the burner, we put some of the acid gas in the burner with it, part of the acid gas then is bypassed around the furnace into the back chamber of the furnace and that gives us an elevated front zone temperature. 
One example, depending on your exact setup, is in this graph. As you move the bypass rate up, the temperature in the front end of the furnace goes up, and by bypassing typically 30-40% of your acid gas, you can get an elevated front zone temperature above that 1250C, 2350 Fahrenheit that we're looking for. So hopefully that's given you a reasonable overview of the things you need to look for when you're processing sour water stripper gas. In order to burn it properly, a good burner on the front end, good residence time in the furnace, it's in the furnace itself, uh, good temperatures, the number one thing, and don't put too much ammonia in the front end. We appreciate you listening. If you like this video or other videos, please subscribe to our channel and ring that bell. We hope to see you again in future videos. Take care.